What is the low hanging fruit in marketing for a business? Things you could do today for the lowest amount of effort that's gonna get you the biggest return. And uh, Alan, I think really one of the first things that I'd look at when it comes to low hanging fruit in marketing and advertising is retargeting. Just like simple putting your code, your tracking code on a website, looking at who's already going to the site, and then remarketing to them when they're off site, reminding them that you're there. Uh, there's a hot audience, which is the people that are ready to buy, who know about you, who know your product, already been educated, right? There's, there's something that we haven't discussed, it's about educating the client about right. this product. Uh, so once they're already familiar with it, they've been to your website already, they've probably even added it to the cart, they just didn't complete the purchase, that is your lowest hanging fruit. Um, then it goes to people who visit your site, people who know about you, who watched videos on you. So there's, there's, a, there's a notion where you can build an audience based on people who have viewed a video of yours, let's say, right? So let's say you did a one minute video about your product, trying to educate the client for them to buy. They didn't buy, but they watched the whole video. Guess what, now that fruit has gone a little bit lower. Um, and then later on, if that same person went to your site, that person, that fruit is actually considered lower. So um, retargeting is for sure an easy, easy way to create sales. Email marketing, that's like my number two. Big portion of your revenue, if you do it right, will be your email sequence, right? So there is a science behind it of um, it's true. providing great value in the beginning, catching their interest. It's all about making it warmer, right? Cold to warm, and uh, email list is obviously very cheap as far as um, delivering the message and you see huge upticks of traffic, huge upticks of traffic and it converts, you know, a 10% open rate. You know, there's these figures where like not everyone is gonna open it, not everyone's gonna click on it, but if you have a decent sized list, you can do some damage, you can do some, you can yeah. make some revenue. I mean, I, I've been implementing this thing, especially with a lot of our new clients is um, audience building and list building. Building audiences, at which I consider them like digital real estate, because that's gonna have a value. The advantage of having a big list that you can drop a new promotional deal, whether it's you're selling cars, whether you're selling um, hats. Um, we have an email list of 5,000 or 10,000 people, and we've already been emailing them, and we're trying to find a new way to get the customer without spamming them, right? Landing pages and monetizing your idea. Having like the capability or someone that can do that on your team, like the moment you have an idea, just start selling it and when you get traction, okay, cool, now you work out the logistics. Do you have any experience with setting up a product like that? I have a client, I can't disclose his name, he's very, very <laughs> popular, very, very famous in this space. He's notorious for um, creating campaigns and projects without having anything produced. It's, right. we, would, we would literally sit here and come up with an idea, let's try this, yeah. and build a page, and the page, the site, would look like there's so much back end, and you test to see if it converts, and if it converts, then you deal with it later. Um, there's a psychology to it where you wanna basically have um, people get funneled into exactly what you want them to do. So when you give them a website, you're giving them all this free motion to do whatever they want, and we just want them to go and purchase. So landing pages allow us that, they're optimized based on what ad we're showing to get you, to get the person to convert. I also want to give a low hanging fruit for uh, social media. I like the idea of native advertising. So something that doesn't necessarily look like an ad. Um, we're so um, blind to commercials and things that look like commercials as opposed to something more authentic. And it, it, it could be as simple as you standing by a fence and uh, trying to jump over it or, and saying, you know, this is the advantages of <laughs> offense, you know, I can't get over it and you fall on your face. I mean, there's humor is obviously one way. So the native approach, because what happens is if people share that more, um, people like it more, and if it all of a sudden gets five times the amount of views, guess what? That's going to make your cost per yeah. acquisition cheaper. It's going to make everything cheaper. I can assure you that the dumbest videos, the dumbest pictures have been by far my highest converting ads. I'm not saying yeah. for you to go start jumping over fences, but what I'm telling you is you gotta be creative. You gotta, you gotta work really well with an ad copy and a direct response marketer 
who knows the psychology of what people want to see and how to disrupt them.